and welcome. Today we have a common Bible story coming to you from Genesis chapter 16, certainly not one of the highlights of the works of those patriarchs of the Bible, but is the story of the birth of Ishmael. Maybe you know that how the story goes that Abram needs a son, but his wife Sarai is unable to give him one. That everything, the promise of God and of the salvation, not only of the current world, but of all mankind, of all times and all places, depends upon Abram having a son. A son that Sarai can't give him. So she finds a work around. She finds a way to help God keep his promise and gives Hagar, her servant, to Abram, her husband. It sounds like a terrible thing, a horrible choice. How could you ever make it? But imagine the humility it would have taken for Sarai to admit that she is not the one from whom the promised Savior would come. Imagine how hard it would have been for her to give her husband to another, how hard it would be to tell your boyfriend or girlfriend to kiss another person, much less lie down with them and have a child with them. But she does, and Abram does, and they have a child. It's never the right decision. Certainly all three of them would have told you it was the wrong thing to do, but it was the only option that they saw. So Abram allows it, Sarai allows it, Hagar allows it, and really even God allows it as Hagar becomes pregnant. God allows nature to take its course. He doesn't prohibit and forbid. He doesn't close the womb of Hagar like he had done with Sarah, but she gets pregnant. She concedes. And then it gets even worse because Hagar looks down on Sarai because she's unable to have a child and probably treats her poorly because of it. And so Sarai gets upset with her husband Abram for doing the very thing she told him to do. So then she, in turn, treats Hagar poorly so that Hagar runs away. A bad situation getting worse and worse and worse, one sin after another. God works through all of it. He works to pre preserve Hagar even when she runs away into the wilderness. He works to preserve Ishmael even though he is not the son of the promise. God preserves the marriage of Abram and Sarai, and immediately after, in the very next chapter of the Bible, God institutes the covenant of circumcision. He gives Abram another chance, another shot, a way so that Abram would see God will be faithful to his promise. Even in the unfaithfulness of his people, even in the sin of the people to do something so horrible and wretched as they have done, God is faithful to his promise always. He brings a savior. Abraham and Sarah have a son, Isaac, who has a son and a son, and Jesus, to forgive all of us of all that we have done wrong. In Jesus' name, amen.